Bring your palms face up on your thighs, a gesture that creates space, invites a little receptivity into the practice. Less control, more going with the flow today. Less trying to change and manipulate things and more opening our palms and letting things come and go as they need to. Notice anything in your life, anywhere that you feel like you're trying to micromanage, anywhere that you might be overthinking. Can you just relax, maybe just for a moment, be done with that. Just for a moment, create a sense of spaciousness around whatever that issue or problem might be. Let your heart relax. So you draw attention to the breath, feel how awareness on the breath helps to polish the mind. How it begins to remove any feeling of dust or cobwebs. Bring the palms together in a prayer. Seal your intention into your heart to be spacious, to not control so much. And then come to hands and knees. Take some cat-cows, letting the belly fall as you breathe in and rounding and arching through the spine as you breathe out. Keep rippling through the spine and moving in any direction that you feel called to. So you can keep it simple or you can begin to add your own movements here. Sweet undulations that start to open the body up from the inside. Thread the needle, reach your right arm out and up, and then slowly slip the right arm underneath the left shoulder, resting your right ear on the mat. The left hand can plug a little more sturdily into the ground, kind of a feeling of pushing the earth away from you. And then keeping that right arm threaded under the left, sit back to your heels and take eagle arms. On your inhale, stand on your knees, tip the elbows up and back. And on your exhale, bring your seat down. Bring the elbows in towards your belly and round. And do that a few more times, inhaling, finding a back bend with your eagle arms. And exhaling, bringing them in into a forward bend. And the next time you rise up, you can keep your eagle arms, step your right foot forward, and then release the arms up to the sky alongside your ears, Anjaneyasana. Lower your hands to the earth slide your hips back take a runner's lunge you might need to move the right foot forward an inch or two as you fold over that right leg paint the breath up and down the back of the right leg and then inhale look forward bend the front knee curl the back toes under lift your hips step back downward facing dog spread the breath through the whole shape bones to scan fingers to toes Roll out into a plank pose, and then bend your elbows lower all the way to the earth. Reach your arms out, palms facing up, full pranam. Again, that idea of receptivity, of not micromanaging, but wherever it feels like a closed fist to unclench. Pull the hands under the chest, cobra, through hands and knees, back to child's pose. After a moment of settling in your child's pose, draw yourself back up to hands and knees. Cat-cow practice, belly drops, lift the chin, look up, and then exhale round, coil into yourself, adding your own unique movements here, whatever it takes to unlock any of those sticky spots in the body, sticky spots in the heart. Where do we get stuck? Where do we get caught up in things. You can use this practice as a way to unstick yourself. Left arm opens out and up for thread the needle. Slide it under the right shoulder. Rest your left ear on the earth. Push the right palm gently into the ground in front of you. And then slowly move your seat back to your heels. Twine your arms in eagle wrap, Garuda. Inhaling, stand on your knees. Lift your elbows up and arch back. 
and then deeply exhaling, fold into yourself and round. Twice more. Once more, lifting the elbows this time, staying tall, taking a big step forward with the left foot. And then once the hips settle, you can free the arms and stretch them up alongside your head. Feel the tailbone reaching towards the front heel, the low belly lifting in and up. Drop your hands, straighten the front leg out, draw the hips back and flex your left toes. Take a bow over that long leg and spread the breath through the whole shape again and again. Keep using that breath to make space in your mind. Shift forward to lunge, curl the back toes, downward facing dog. Reach the heart forward, heels back, plank pose. Lower all the way to the earth. Send your arms forward as you uncurl your toes, palms facing up. Rest your bones, release the clenching. And then hands under the shoulders, cobra. Back through hands and knees, child's pose. and then downward facing dog. Take this dog for a slow walk, one sweet footstep at a time, all the way up to the top of the mat for Uttanasana, the forward bend. Hang over your legs, you can shake things out for a moment. Feel the whole upper body spill out of the hips like a waterfall. And then soft knees roll all the way up to stand, Tadasana like a mighty mountain peak. Bring your palms together. Breathing from your feet all the way up to the heart. Inhale, raise your prayer to the sky. Exhale, fold over your long legs. Touch the earth. Step the right foot back, look forward. Downward facing dog landing. No hurry. Roll out into plank pose, pause. Lower all the way to the earth. Full pranam, reach arms out and palms open. Hands under the shoulders, open your heart. Through hands and knees, back to downward facing dog. Raise your right toes up to the sky and smoothly step your foot up between your hands. Help it if you need to. Back knee comes down and you open your arms up to the sky to open your heart. Dropping the hands, curl the back toes, step forward, fold at the top of your space. Keep the knees soft and roll up or straight and arms out to the side and up. Touch the palms, look up, hands to heart center. Inhale, raise your prayer to the sky. Exhale, open and dive out over your legs. Take the left foot back with a mighty step, look forward. <clears throat> Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Stretch out into a plank pose. All the way to the earth, full pranam, reach arms out and open those palms, right? Practice, practice, keep practicing that letting go until it happens. Hands under the shoulders, open your heart, cobra. Through hands and knees, back into downward facing dog where you land, where you settle. And then raise the left toes up to the sky, step forward. Anchor the back knee down and lift your arms up. Just about making space. So go to where it still feels spacious and not constricting. Drop your hand, step the back foot forward, fold. And on your inhale, rise all the way up. Connect the palms and bring them all the way back to heart center. Inhale, reach your prayer to the sky. You can back bend a little and then forward bend over your legs. Step the right leg back, look forward. Downward facing dog. Ride it out into plank on an in-breath. And you can lower chaturanga this time. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Raise the right leg up to the sky behind you. Step it forward, place the back knee down. Anjane Asana, reach your arms up. Spread your wings. Drop your hands, step forward, fold in half, Uttanasana, and inhale all the way up, touch the palms, collect it back at the heart, pause. Raise your prayer to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs, touch the earth. 
Step the left leg way back, long spine, downward facing dog, landing, and then ripple yourself forward, plank pose, and catch it halfway down, chaturanga. Inhale, sweep the heart through the gate of the arms, and exhale back, downward facing dog. Raise your left toes to the sky, step your left foot forward. Drop the back knee down, lift your arms up in the air, Anjaneya. And release the hands, step the back foot forward to fold. Rise all the way up, touch the palms. And drop that prayer right into your heart, drop your mind right into your heart. I'm going to show you this next one just so you can see. I'll show you first and then we'll do it. You're going to open your palms up and then dive the fingers in towards you. Turn them towards you and then reach them towards the ground as if you're diving under the ocean. Hook your thumbs together as you rise up and arch, arch, arch back. And then soft knees, swing down, gather up the hands behind you and stretch them as much as they'll go up and over. And then from there, I'll show you the rest after that. So we're gonna do that. Open the palms as if you're holding a little bowl of flowers in your hands. And then point the fingers in towards your chest, really slowly here. You know, it's as if you're embracing, you're inviting the present. You're graciously receiving everything that this present moment has to offer you and to teach you without any, um, any fighting or pushing away. So bring that bowl of flowers in towards your chest. Turn the fingers down, backs of the hands together, and then hook the thumbs and rise up, arch back. And then swing down, catch the hands behind you, stretch the arms up and over and fold. Gently release your hands, look forward. Step or hop back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog, stay. After a handful of breaths and downward facing dog, bend your knees, lift your gaze, look between your hands, then you can step or hop up to the top of the mat. When you get there, elongate, come up halfway and then fold again. Rise all the way up, touch the palms above your head and bring the hands to prayer at your heart. Then you're gonna open up your little bowl full of flowers, receiving the present moment as if you had prayed for it. Bring the hands in towards your heart and then dive under, hook the thumbs to rise up and arch back. When you can't arch anymore, release and swing down, catch the hands and fold. As you gently release your hands, look forward, keep the heart reaching out, chaturanga, try not to drop your head. Upward dog into downward facing dog where you get to stay and breathe. Spaciousness mind like a clear blue sky heart as wide as the ocean look forward bend the knees step or jump up to the top of the mat when you get there stretch the spine out come up halfway and then fold let the inhale bring you all the way back up where the palms touch collect it all back into the heart pause one more breath here in all the way out and then raise your prayer up to the sky and arch back exhale dive down over your legs to feel the ground beneath you as you inhale look forward send the heart reaching out and step or jump back chaturanga inhale up dog and exhale hips up and back into downward facing dog lift your right leg up to the sky behind you Carefully step your foot all the way up through the hands. Anchor the back heel. Rise up, warrior one. Heart shining like a laser beam straight ahead. And then bend your elbows like they're football goal posts. Draw them back. And open your arms wide. Can you lay back? There's such a sense of trust here. Such a great feeling of opening, of receiving. And then catch the hands in an interlace behind you and charge that heart open even more. The head can fall back. And then you dive down inside that front thigh for the humble warrior. 
arms reaching up and over your head. Okay, bending that front knee a lot actually makes the pose easier, believe it or not. So bend well. Rise slowly up and open into reverse warrior. Shimmy the feet apart if you need to. Stretch to the side and when you can't stretch anymore, then you'll release the hands cartwheel down. Step on back plank pose and bend the elbows chaturanga. Inhale up dog and exhale back downward facing dog. Let's do the other side. Raise your left toes up to the sky. Send that foot up between your hands. Take your time. Anchor the back heel. Warrior one from the back leg. Can that back leg really plant and lift you up? And then bend your elbows. Draw them back. See if you can even bring them back behind your ears. And then keep that heart wide open, spread your wings, open the arms straight out to the side, lean back, and then swing those hands behind your back and interlace them. Put the other thumb on top this time, knuckles down, heart flies up towards the sky. And then a great surrender as you take a bow, as you bow to everything. Can you bow to all that this present moment, this present situation has brought to your door? Can you be humble enough to see the teachers when they come? Up and open, reverse warrior. Swing those arms all the way around. Right hand slides towards the ankle. And then spill your hands down, catch it in a plank pose. Bend the elbows, inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. You can make some sound as you exhale. <sighs> and then look forward, step or hop up. Elongate on your in-breath and fold on your out-breath. Rise up where the palms connect above your head. Utkatasana, bend your knees. Keep the arms reaching up alongside your ears. And then wrap your right leg over and your right arm under for Garudasana, the eagle. Tuck the right hip back as you lift your elbows away from your thighs. Sink the hips just a tiny bit more. Breathe steadily. When you unravel your Garuda, that's going to stand in Tadasana for just a moment. And then Gomukhasana arms, right elbow points up, left elbow points down. You can always grab your t-shirt or a strap, no problem. Hinging from the hips, take a forward fold here. If you need to bend your knees, of course you can. Otherwise, keep them straight. Keep lifting the sitting bones up and a little forward as the inner thighs roll back. Try to keep your Gomukhasana arms if you can. Practice staying. So often when things get tough, we just want a quick exit. We want to run away. So yoga teaches us staying power. Let your arms softly fall. Soften the knees. Roll your way up to stand. Hold your left ankle behind you, not Trajasana, the dancer, standing on that right leg. Lift your right arm up. Kick your left toes up and back. Can you pass that back foot off to your right hand now? Reach the left arm up. A little bit of a twist in your dancer. Hold on to that foot as long as you like. Eventually, you'll have to let it go to come to sitting, seated, twist. So tucking the left knee behind your standing leg. Right hand comes behind you. Right foot steps well onto the earth over that left knee. Raise your left arm, lean back, create so much spaciousness. And then twisting towards the right, tucking the left elbow over the knee, or you can always modify to fit better for your body. Every inhale makes you brighter, lighter, taller. And when you exhale, you twist from just behind the navel center. Try to make space across the front of the heart. Turn back to center. And you can swing the right leg back and then step back downward facing dog. Look forward, bend the knees, step or hop up, elongate and then take a deep bow. Rise all the way up, bend your knees, Utkatasana, fierce pose, sink the hips. 
Utkatasana turns into your Garudasana, your eagle. So left leg over and left arm under this time. Move the wrist gently away from your forehead as you sink the hips. Untwine your eagle, stand in Tadasana, pausing for a moment. And then we'll add arms, Gomakasana, left elbow points up, right elbow points down. Catch hold of whatever you can, whether it's the hands, the t-shirt, or a strap. And then hinging at the hips, bow forward for Gomakasana in Uttanasana. Feel the crown of the head melt towards the earth. Imagine your brain here unfolding like an open palm, just softening and widening. And then those arms can so gently release and just drip down towards the floor. Soften your knees, roll all the way up for your dancer pose. This time holding onto the right ankle and raising the left arm. Kick your toes back, reach your fingers to the sky, keep your heart really buoyant. And then we'll add the twist, left hand comes behind to hold the right foot, right arm reaches up. And you can let go of that foot when you need to to come down to your seated spinal twist. So the left knee will tuck behind the standing leg, Ardha Matsyandrasana. Make sure two sitting bones are on the ground. That left foot is planted well on the ground over the right knee. Spine is tall. And then left hand comes behind you, props you up. Right arm reaches to the sky. Inflate, open in every direction. And then go ahead and twist. Right elbow can come across the knee or you can hug the knee. Try to find so much space on the front line of the body, the front of the spine, the front of the heart. Always being careful not to get aggressive in a twist. Sometimes we can become a little too urgent in a twisting shape. Unravel. Step the left foot back. Step the right foot back. Downward facing dog. Looking forward, step or hop your knees to the top of the mat to sit in Virasana. Sit between your feet with your knees close together. If you need to sit on a blanket or block or cushion, go for it. Rest your palms face up at the top of your thighs, reminding yourself to stay open, to stay open to the teachers when they come, to stay open to the lessons that each day brings. When we force our agenda on things, is usually where we get in trouble. If you have room, you can take Supta Virasana, scoop the tail underneath you, come down onto your back. You can reach overhead and hold onto opposite elbows, drawing them towards the earth. If that's not quite there in your practice yet, no problem. And if you are in Supta Virasana, gradually bring yourself back up to a tall spine. To come out of this one, you can come out of it into Shirshasana A, the supported headstand. So coming into your headstand if, with straight legs if you can. If not, you can bend the knees. If supported headstand isn't in your practice, that's fine too. You can spend a few more moments in Virasana and then shake it out in a downward dog. If you're going up into the headstand, try to eagle wrap your legs. Put the left leg on top. And then see if you can twist your legs to the right. Twist as far as you can. And when you can't twist anymore, then you can unwrap your eagle legs. Bring your eagle legs back together. Wrap them the other way. Right leg on top. Twist your legs all the way to the other side. You can keep them wrapped up or you can open them almost like a a split, like a Hanuman in the air. And if you open them, then you can bring them back together. Release the eagle legs in the headstand, stretch your legs straight up in the air. And then come slowly, slowly back down. You can land right back in your Virasana 
as if it never happened, palms facing up on the thighs. If you were shaking it out in a downward dog or somewhere else, come on back to Virasana. Take a few moments here to really let the dust settle, to let the heartbeat slow down, the breath to deepen, creating space. Good, stretch your legs back, downward facing dog, bend one knee and then the other for a moment. And then lower down to child's pose, drop your seat to your heels. And rising up, stand on your knees, reach your arms up and lean back. And then fold back down into child's pose, arms extended. Come up through a deeply rounded spine like a cat back. Mount the hips forward and lift your chest into an up dog. Curl the toes, downward facing dog. And get into a little back bending now. Raise your right toes up to the sky behind you. Bend the knee that's in the air, open up that hip. Straighten the leg out. Bring the right foot up between your hands. And then move the right hand to the inside of the right foot for lizard. You can put your back knee down. You can wiggle around a little bit. And then step back, downward dog. Downward dog becomes child's pose. Drop to your knees, seat to heel. Stand on your shins. Reach your arms into the sky and lean back. Just as much as you need to, but not too much. Child's pose, fall forward. Come on up through your rounded spine and then pour your heart forward into up dog. Curl the toes, raise your hips into down dog. Extend your left leg up to the sky, bend the knee up there, open the hip. And then after a couple of breaths, straighten that left leg out up towards the sky. Again, step it forward and move your left hand to the inside of the foot. Just wiggle around a little bit in your lizard. You can shift the back heel forward and back. You can move side to side. Then step on back, downward facing dog. Drop to your knees, child's pose. We'll do that again, but add on. Stand on your shins, sweep your arms up to the sky. You can lean back maybe just a touch more this time. Open the gates of the heart. Pour down into child's pose, drop your head to the earth, and then climb up through that rounded back. Exaggerate it. Ripple forward into upward facing dog. And then lift your hips, downward facing dog. Raise your right toes to the sky, open that hip and the knee and you can fall backwards into your wild thing this time. If it's in your practice, if not, no worries. Right palm can come to the heart, add a little soul to your pose. And then release it and slowly come back around one leg dog. That right foot's gonna step up to the outside of the mat. Right hand moves inside the foot and add a twist here. Drop the back knee, roll to the pinky edge of the right foot, twist to the right. You can put your palm on your right thigh to help it open a little bit. Turn back to center, plant the back toes, downward facing dog. Drop to your knees, child's pose. Drag the fingers back, roll up, sweep your arms to the sky, open your heart. And like water, pour down to earth into child's pose. Come up through your rounded back and drip your way into your upward facing dog. Then curl your toes, raise your hips, downward facing dog. Left toes up and back into the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. You can spin on the ball of your right foot to tip over into your wild thing. The left palm can come right to your heart. Maybe you can get so quiet you can feel maybe even hear your own heartbeat and then release the back bend come on around into one like a dog again step your left foot slowly and calmly up to the outer edge of the mat drop the back knee down and take your lizard twist the left knee rolls open you can roll right into the pinky edge of the foot turn your heart towards the left Turn back to center, plant the palms, downward facing dog. 
drop to your knees, seat to heels, child's pose. This time you can go right into a camel. You can reach for your heels, come right up into camel, or you can do what we did before, stand on your knees and sweep your arms to the sky if camel's a little bit too much. Melt your camel down into a child's pose or fall into child's pose if you were standing on your knees. Come up through the rounded back into your king cobra this time. Press your fingertips into the ground, bend your knees, toss the head back. From King Cobra, downward facing dog. Raise your right toes to the sky, open up that hip and slowly fall backwards into your wild thing. Maybe even into full wheel this time if that's in your practice. And then you gotta come back around, so turn it inside out. If you were in wheel, one leg dog, right leg lifted, right foot to the outer edge of the mat, back knee comes down. This time you can put your left forearm down if you have the room, palm is fine too. And reach for your back foot with your right hand, draw it in towards your sitting bone. The head can fall back, that feels nice to open the throat. Just feeling your way into it without force, just seeing where there are blockages, where you feel stuck, allowing things to soften and open. Good, turn back to center, take that runner's stretch, straighten out the front leg in your lunge, and then see if there's room to go towards a Hanuman, a full split. So you can start to slide that right foot out, any little bit will do. If you wanna stay in that runner's lunge, lunge, you're welcome to do that too. If you're perched on the ground, or if you have a block underneath your right thigh, you can reach your arms up in the air and lean back, open your heart here. And then slowly pull yourself back up through the runner's lunge. Bend the front knee, step back downward facing dog. Shake it around a little bit. And you got one more side. Drop to your knees, child's pose. So you can hold your heels and unfold right into a camel. Or you can stand on your knees and reach your arms up like we did before. From where you are, go ahead and pour forward into your child's pose. Come on up through the rounded back, roll it forward, King Cobra. Fingertips on the ground, just a little softness in the elbows as the knees bend and the toes come towards the head. And then downward facing dog. Raise your left leg, bend the knee, open up that hip, flip your dog over. Stay there or go all the way into Urdhva the full wheel. And then turn it back around, coming into your one-legged dog, left leg high. Take the left foot to the outer edge of the mat for twisty lizard, back knee down, left toes turn out. You can put the right forearm down if you have the room. And then try to reach for that back foot. If you don't catch it just yet, that's fine. Maybe just play with bending that back knee a little bit. If you have the foot, you can start to press it in towards the sitting bone. And then releasing, hands in front of you. Move your left hand to the outside of the left foot. Runner stretch or half Hanuman. Fold over your long left leg. And then start to squeak that left foot forward, coming into your Hanuman Asana, your full splits pose. Feel free to put two blocks under your hands or a block under your front thigh. Arms lift, heart opens, spaciousness in every direction. Let the breath sweep your mind clean. Drop the hands, bring the back leg around to the front this time. Kind of fall off to the left side to bring the right leg around. And then come onto your back and hug your knees into your chest. You can rock a little bit from side to side here. Happy baby pose. Hold on to the outer edges of your feet. Drop your knees to either side of your torso. Breathe deeply into lungs here, front, back, up and down, sides, everywhere. To release happy baby, hug the knees back into your chest. And then you can rock back into halasana, plow pose. Swing the legs over your head, catch your hands behind your back, rock the shoulders underneath you. 
And then bringing your palms to your back with the fingers pointing towards the sky, lift your legs into shoulder stand, Sarvangasana. In shoulder stand, you can also take eagle like we did in headstand. Wrap your right leg over the left. This is just a fun little shoulder stand adventure if you want to try it. You can take your left palm to your sacrum, twist your legs to the left, walk your right hand over to the right away from you for balance, and then try to drop your right toes to the left side. Woo. And then go back through plow and try the other way. So shoulder stand. And then you're gonna wrap your left leg around your right leg, eagle legs, that might be enough for now. Or you move your right hand into the middle of your sacrum. You twist your legs to the left. Walk your left hand away from you so that'll help plant you, give you a little more stability. I'm cheating here by holding the grass really tightly. <laughs> and then you drop your eagle legs over to the right side as if your left toes are gonna come to the earth, to the right side of your hips. And bring it all back to center. Ooh, that's a big one. Stretch up into shoulder stand, legs up to the sky. Drop back into plow, legs fall overhead. And then you can roll down, bend your knees on the way down. Roll yourself right up to sitting now. Take your feet in front of you, hip width apart, your palms behind you, fingers point forward, tabletop upside down. I'll offer your heart to the sky. Let the head melt back if that's comfortable for you. Have a couple of big exhales here. Wonderful throat opener. Lower your seat down to the earth. Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees apart, lengthen your spine towards the sky and then fold forward, reaching your sternum towards your big toes. The head can drop at the end. Moving the awareness deeper within the body now. And roll your way up to a tall spine. Close your knees like you're closing a book. Take your right hand behind you. Hug your knees with your left arm. Lengthen up and twist to the right. Just a simple little finishing twist. Turn back to center. You can wrap your arms around your shins and fold forward gently. And then go the other way. Left hand behind you. Raise the spine. Twist to the left, spreading across the front of the heart. Turn back to center, arms around the shins, drop your head. And then with as little fuss as possible, just roll your way down onto your back to rest in Shavasana. Namaste.